I am Yasser Kholani from Daraya, from the Reef of Damascus, or the countryside of Damascus. I am Nabil Sherbaji's friend. Did you meet Mr. Nabil? I knew Nabil before the Syrian revolution. He is uh, from the same city, from Daraya. I know him closely. He's friend of my brothers. I know him from the group of Anas Mosque in Daraya. I met Nabil a lot before the revolution. However, uh, we became closer during the Syrian revolution. About that encounter, and in those days, uh, prior and immediately after the revolution, would you began working together and engaging on activities together? Nabil is uh, from the younger uh, group of uh, the youth of Daraya. He is from the group of uh, the guys who were detained in 2003, and they were working in several fields. I knew Nabil before the revolution, but there was no work uh, between us. So I know him because he was uh, my brother's uh, friend. I know him and I know his family. Before the Syrian revolution, we did not work together. When did you learn about uh, and if you participated about Nabil's work as a journalist, and if you can just describe it to the best of your ability. At the beginning of the Syrian revolution, we were a group of uh, young men. We all participated in the protests and in the revolution. Each person had his role or her role. Nabil's role was to uh, take pictures or videos and to upload the, the videos on the internet. Who was uh, one of the people who uh, established uh, the uh, Daraya Coordination Committee? So we used to meet on a daily basis or almost on a daily basis. Uh, Nabil was the link uh, or the point of contact between many of us, many of the groups. So we started working together at the beginning of the movement of the revolution of 2011. So there was a group of uh, guys who were uh, were doing this uh, peaceful uh, movement in Daraya. Nabil was a group, a part of this group, and during these meetings that we held, I became closer with Nabil. So Nabil was a friend of my brothers uh, at the beginning. Our relationship grew during the revolution, and we used to meet almost on a daily basis. Uh, or activities, Mr. Kolani, as you were part of this group and through your brother and Nabil became more engaged. I used to do field work mostly, and Nabil was working as uh, in the media or in coordination. Uh, most uh, of the guys who were filming something or uploading something were working in coordination and cooperation with Nabil. So it was like a comprehensive group with uh, divided roles. A while after this work, I started working in relief among this group. When you say field work, that means that you were to photograph the demonstrations and also get that kind of document to be later uploaded, or what do you mean? It's possible to uh, film uh, protests. There are also people who would film uh, protests but do, do not want to be in direct contact with activists such as uh, Nabil uh, for fear of their, for their life, for their families and uh, fear of being detained. So there were uh, contact points between people.
For example, a person can uh, undertake any activity or film a video and wants to convey it to another person. So we have these contact persons, and uh, we convey these videos through these contact persons. And because of the security situation, we, have to, we had to work in this uh, way. Was arrested uh, in Sogosnabil in 2011. Is that correct? No, man. Yes, both my brothers were detained. One on 22/7/2011, and the second on 8/8/2011, uh, when my second brother was detained. He was uh, Nabil's close friend. They used to uh, sleep in our house at the. Uh, they were close friends. They used to sleep at, uh, in our house at the same time. And all the circumstances of your brother's arrests. My first brother was detained on a Friday on 27-7, on 22-7. During the detention, uh, he was trying, so the people, uh, so the, the, the security agent tried to uh, make him call all the people who are on his contact list. Uh, so. The person who detained him started calling my brother and started saying things to him, trying to make him say things so he would lead him to be detained. So my brother, Abdel Sattar, uh, was the older brother, and my uh, Majd was my younger brother. So Abdel Sattar did not let Majd go. And uh, my brother, who was detained, was saying on the phone, uh, was asking us to come and uh, uh, free him. So my brother, Abdel Sattar, who was born in the 1980, who went to bring him, and unfortunately he was killed because the security agency had made uh, some sort of a trap. And on the same day, uh, Islam was uh, detained as well in an area that is close to the protest area. My second brother was detained during Ramadan on 8-8-2011. On he was also uh, uh, detained in an ambush. Uh, he was detained with a group of guys. It was the morning. He was uh, at his friends. Uh, he received a call, and then he was detained. So between the, the, the uh, detention of my both, bro both my brother, there was less than one month. And how long was your uh, brother uh, arrested in August to stay in prison? Was he released eventually? Both my brothers didn't make it out of prison. They stayed for a while in the Air, Air Force Intelligence uh, branch, and then they were transferred to Sidnaya uh, prison. Two to three years later, the regime gave us their death certificates. Both had the same uh, date uh, of death, so they were not, uh, they never made it out of prison, and they died as martyrs. Okay, were your brothers, or were they communicating with the outside at all in those two or three years since their arrest? In 2012, in November 2012, as far as I remember, and please excuse me because this is very, it's very painful to remember all these things and it's difficult to remember everything exactly how it was. So we visited them only once uh, inside Nayav uh, prison. Uh, and you know, like in Syria, we have favoritism and we know people, so we managed to visit them once. After this visit, my mother tried to visit them, and the security agency was telling them that they were not present in uh, Sidnaya anymore. So they told her this many times. And then, when their death certificate, the, uh, the, when the death certificates were distributed, uh, and uh, they distributed the death certificates of numerous Syrian guys, and my, the names of my brothers were among them. Before I moved to, to, to February 2012, 
No, we were not able to recover the bodies. We did not we did not recover the bodies, and we only saw them once between 2011 until the news of their death. So we saw them only once, one year and a half after their detention. And then the only news we got after that was the death certificates. If I can now move you, take you to the 26th of February 2012. Um, could you please describe the events, what happened in, in the events around the moment where the Constitution was actually burned and it was all of this commotion that precipitated the arrest and the repression? After Majid was detained, uh, Nabil used to stay in our house. And he used to stay for months in that house. And he used to uh, always come back to this house. So, and uh, most of the time, we would be together, Nabil and I. And during some period of time, uh, the situation in the Raya was uh, calm. And in February 2012, uh, there were lots of uh, protests in Syria and, to, and, and objecting uh, to the new constitution. And people started organizing some activities, and some of them burned the, the constitution. And these activities also took place in Daraya. On that day, the situation was very bad. All the shops were closed. The security. Uh, security agencies and officers uh, were very present in the Raya. They did not only make uh, checkpoints, but they had also some sort of uh, uh, convoys, cars, uh, military cars and civilian cars with people wearing the military uniform and uh, wearing the civilian uniform. So they were everywhere. The situation was very bad. There was no electricity. Most people were in their homes. And we were in eastern Daraya. This is where my house, our house was. And we stayed in this area up until uh, 9 or 10 at night. And on that day, Nabil decided to go out because we needed to uh, get uh, video footages from a, a person and we needed to move them to another area. So at night, we went out. Uh, there was no electricity. My brother Bilal, uh, myself and Nabil uh, went at night. And we were taking side roads. And we were doing our best not to go close to any uh, place where the security agencies were present. We reached uh, the Revolution Street or Athausa Street, and it's an interaction, intersection between two streets. Uh, suddenly, we saw a whole convoy composed of eight to ten vehicles uh, with uh, military people and civilian people. So. They stopped us. We were in a pickup uh, truck car, and we were moving without using the headlights, so we wouldn't be detected. And uh, each person was looking and making, like ch checking the road on uh, the left and right. So the security officers stopped us, and uh, they brought us out of the car. They took our names, and they uh, made us stand uh, against a wall. So we stood against the wall, and they told us to wait. They took down our identity cards and went. At that point, two officers came and started searching the car. Nabil had the laptop and the hard disk in the car. Uh, so one of the soldiers carried the laptop and came. And the person who went to check the identity cards came back to us also. And so he started asking, what's your name? What is your job? Who is your family? What do you know? So these known questions, in addition to lots of uh, humiliating words and insults, so they were saying lots of uh, bad things to us. So when the person who went to check the IDs came back, he asked me and my brother Bilal, so he was trying to remember Majid. So he started asking us, uh, are you this person's brother? We did not answer. And then he asked uh, Nabil. So we were all standing against the wall and asked Nabil, what's your name? He answered Nabil Sharbaji, what do you work? He said, I'm a journalist. So he asked again, are you a journalist? He said, yes. 
so uh, the, that soldier went uh, to a high ranked officer and they took Nabil at that moment. So they took Moon, took him, uh, covered her, his face. So they covered his face with the sweater he was wearing and they put him in a car. So they uh, left him in the car and came and started investigating with us. They started asking us where we were, what we were doing, where were we going. So we are uh, trying to be smart and trying to evade the, the answers of uh, answering these questions. So all this lasted approximately half an hour. And then the, the officer said, I don't want to see you here. You have to be uh, gone within one minute. So we left. Uh, so. We started, we, we were about to leave, and uh, the officers, um, before we left, the officers were debating whether they would uh, detain us or not, and Nabil was still in that car. And then they said, you have to be gone in one moment. So at this moment, we left. On that day, uh, there was no internet connection in uh, Daraya, and there was a large group working with us. I was very afraid, and I was worried, and I needed to inform the group that uh, Nabil was detained, and there was no means of communication. I remember that there was a doctor in the group, and his name was Akram. So I reached him, and I told him that uh, Nabil was detained. Uh, so he was able to disseminate, be, uh, disseminate the information. Usually, the security agencies would uh, arrest a person, and they would take uh, check all the content, uh, the, the contacts in his contact list, uh, and try to contact them, and they try to extract information from them. You left this the um, this the space where they did you see what happened with Nabil if they take them away do you see any further? So. So they decided to de they detained him. And the security uh, agency, uh, like officers, uh, usually b beat uh, the uh, detainees. So they beat him uh, before we left. And then they put him in a car. So we were not able to stay because the, we were afraid that to, to be called. So we left immediately. The only concern we had was to inform the rest of the group uh, so that they'd be cautious so no one else would be detained or arrested. The days following the Nabil's arrest, amongst, you know, as your activities, you know, unfolded in, in the reaction amongst the group and all of the different groups working together. Mostly, after any arrest, uh, there is a period of calm because the regime would uh, search houses and uh, de detain people or arrest people. So they start to uh, tapping mobile devices. So after a detention, there is a calm period of two to three days. And then uh, people resume their activities. They change houses. They change the tactic, which uh, the tactics of their work. So after Nabil's detention, there was a, a calm period. Usually, after the detention of an important person or prominent personality, there would be a cautious calm period. So everyone would be wondering what they would do. There would be fear also. So we were all aware that we were all under risk or, or under danger of being uh, detained. But we were always afraid for our parents and our families because uh, the regime would uh, be uh, take uh, uh, revenge of our families uh, or de destroy our house. The, the the revenge would not be against the person himself, but against their families. So. Uh, for example, uh, it's not only about Nabil Sharbaj's uh, family. For, uh, they would also uh, get revenge from everyone whose name is Nabil, for example. Next question. Do you think that the officers, the security forces that stopped you and eventually took Nabil away, were looking for Nabil specifically or knew who he was uh, before encountering the laptop and other uh, materials that you had? The, the security forces would usually have a list of uh, wanted people, 
but uh, if they find someone and they found them suspicious, they would detain them. So they were looking for Nabil and other people, and people other than Nabil. So when he said his name, Nabil Sherbaji, and he said he's a journalist, it was over for him. So he confronted them and said he, that he was a journalist. In my opinion, he was trying to uh, protect us because we were two brothers. So he took this step. He said that he's a journalist. And for the regime, when you say you're a journalist, uh, they have like some sort of a fear or phobia from this word. So they knew Nabil by name. And they were looking for him and for others. And they were looking for many other activists. And they were arrested one after the other. Um, will that, did you continue to engage in these activities, communicating, recording, reporting, and reward despite of the, the fate of your brothers in Nabil? Of course, certainly. Uh, two other brothers of mine were uh, detained in 2013, and then uh, my sister was detained after that. And despite all this, I continued working. So we were under siege, and uh, then we were displaced in August 2016. Uh, so all the people continued their activities. Those who did not continue were either killed or detained. So we had a, an objective, we had a target. And to be loyal to Nabil and all the other guys, we had to continue with our work. Thank you very much, Mr. Alani, I don't have any more questions, but, but the, perhaps the, the panel of judges may have some questions. Thank you. Shukran, shukran. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do we have any questions from the panel? Hello. Thank Hello. you for your testimony. I want to know more about uh, what kind of material and documentation Najil has in his computer. And, and if you can to explain more about how was this process of gather information, where do you have to transfer, how do you publish, where do you publish it, all of this thing about the, uh, yes, to, on this process uh, of the information, who receive it, everything to, to, to explain more about how your work was like so important in that moment. Thank you. The information that was on uh, Nabil's laptop or was uh, videos about most of the uh, protests in Daraya uh, in particular, and all the movement in general in Syria. So any peaceful protest or activity in Daraya was, whether it was um, uh, candlelit uh, events or uh, dialogues, uh, peaceful protests, sit-ins, so everything was there. And there was also material uh, from the period before the revolution, through like meetings uh, or dialogues. Uh, there would be also videos of uh, just uh, gatherings of guys. So all the revolutionary activities were present on his laptop. And this laptop was taken by the security agency. Moreover, Nabil used to work with us in a relief agency in Daraya that was established in September 2011. The task of this agency was to help the parents of the detainees uh, and, the parent and the displaced people. Because at that point, we were receiving displaced people from Homs and the Reef of Homs. So uh, uh, myself and Nabil were in this agency, and we were trying to help this family and these people, especially uh, the people who had uh, relatives uh, who were detained uh, uh, with the regime. Could you please repeat the second question? Uh, what do you do with this information? Uh, uh, how do you put it in website or 
you send it to somebody to publish uh, uh, everything about the process mm. of the make some news about this information. So the tasks were distributed on people. So one uh, people would be in charge for uh, uh, filming. Some people are in charge for archiving. Some people uh, are in charge of uh, moving or transferring the videos to a play from a place to another. Some other people were responsible for um, <coughs> publishing uh, these uh, videos or material. And there were other people tasks of the guaranteeing or uh, the guaranteeing the safety of the people of the groups. And most people did not sleep in their homes. And sometimes people like Nabil would be away from their home for three to four or five months, and they would not he did not see for his mother, for example, for this period of uh, time because their houses would be uh, under surveillance. And uh, there were also people uh, who were uh, telling on uh, the people. And uh, if there's someone who is wanted, there will be someone watching the house and then when this person comes home uh, the, the security agency would be informed that this person is at home now so we were publishing the information on uh, the pages uh, on the internet of the Syrian revolution and uh, some of them had reached to international uh, media outlets or uh, pages Nabil had a great role in uh, this field because he had experience already in the field of documentation and uh, journalistic work and if you want, uh, sorry, if you can talk more about the role that he has with uh, this uh, other professional journalist, and also uh, how was the training that Najib Najil has uh, to become from activist to a journalist, uh, please. Can you repeat the first question, please? How did he help to profession, professional journalists? And how he be, became a, profe, a journalist from, he was an activist first, I understand, and then he, he was uh, also documenting like a journalist. No, no. Yes, yes. Nabil was one of the rare people uh, who would document news as a journalist. In Syria, at the beginning of the revolution, every person became a journalist uh, and became a relief activist and many other things. He would do many activities. Uh, there was no specializations. Uh, the guys or any guy can do different jobs. Uh, they can be journalists working in relief, rescue and relief. They would uh, uh, take videos, uh, etc. So, we had a lot of jobs and they were distributed among us. But Nabil specialized in this thing in particular because he was studying and he was trying to improve himself in journalism. There are videos documented by Nabil uh, where he filmed uh, guys being arrested, uh, being beaten, uh, all the violations of the uh, regime. Even when he was in Adra prison, he would convey the situation uh, of uh, the prison, inside the prison. Uh, he was witness. Uh, he was like a witness. He was trying to document violations. Uh, he, this is what he was doing more than being a photographer. but also uh, to the technical group. We do not see uh, Gil uh, on the screen. Do you have any contact with him? Is he wishing to ask a question? Oh, now we see you. No question from you, Gil? No. Uh, my question to the witness is, uh, thank you very much. Uh, 
I'm sorry to have to ask a, a specific question about the death certificate that you said you received for, from your, about your brothers. I think you said that they were both killed on the same day, but I'm not sure if you meant the certificate is signed on the same day or is were they both uh, died on the same day. Is, uh, could you be a little more specific? Do you know what happened? Were they executed or what was the... Uh, forgive me for asking this question. I will answer this question, but first of all, I want to say uh, that there are a lot of uh, guys in Daraya and in Syria who would document uh, the violations, uh, film uh, detentions, uh, beatings, but uh, most of the time they wouldn't know each other. These people wouldn't know each other because they, are, they would fear for their life. They would be points of contact. Nabil was a point of contact in Daraya between a lot of uh, the guys. I could be documenting and then another guide is also documenting, but we wouldn't know of each other. There would always be a contact point. In Daraya, Nabil was one of these contact uh, points. When it comes um, to the news I received about uh, the death of my brothers, when they give us the uh, certificate of death, they gave us the date of execution. Uh, they were executed in the same day. It's, they didn't give us the uh, certificate certificates of death uh, on the same day. It's normal for us to receive them on the same day, but it said that they were executed on the same day. And this doesn't only include my brothers Yahya Shurbaji, Islam Dabbas, like four other guys were also executed on that same date. Uh, they were all inside Naya prison. I had another brother who was detained in 2013 at the 215 branch. Uh, he died as a martyr in front of my other brother. His name is Muhammad uh, Ali, and uh, he died as a martyr. So when the uh, Caesar photos were leaked, his picture was among uh, these pictures. These were, uh, this was the first group uh, in the Sadnaya prison. Uh, five or six uh, guys, I don't remember exactly, were executed on the same date. Thank you for, for answering more specifically about such a difficult Difficult question. Yeah. Thank you. Are, are there any other questions from the judges? No, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.